Krita 4.2 is out after close to one year of development. The developers focused on stability. With over 1,500 bucks fixed, now the program is a lot more pleasant to use. It got performance improvements and new features like gamut masking for the advanced color selector, combining selections from layer thumbnails and more. We're going to see them in this video. You can find the table of contents in the video description, as well as links to download the program and to read the full release notes. If it's your first time seeing Krita, it's a complete, professional, free and open source digital painting application. It's available on Windows, Mac and Linux, so you really want to give this a try. Krita 4.2 is the first digital application in the world to support HDR painting. Although you can paint in HDR on any platform currently, only Windows supports displaying these specific images in full high dynamic range on the few compatible displays available on the market. As a result, the feature is only fully compatible with Windows at the moment. This allows you to paint with really bright values to change the brightness of colors and go beyond the limits of regular screens making the flames the light etc much more vibrant on your pictures but also to go darker with the blacks and to go much closer to a real black color coming from the display in other words hdr screens and imagery allows you to see a lot more colors coming out of your display Note that this was an extra feature for Krita 4.2, sponsored by Intel. The palette Docker has been rewritten. It's now a lot more flexible than it used to be. Let's use it to color these bad boys. So you can select any swatch like before by clicking on it. But now you can also drag and drop to reorder color swatches in a very flexible way. You can create groups in there. For that, you have to click on the folder icon in the bottom right of the Docker, click on it, and you'll want to click the Add a Group button. Name your group, let's say my favorite colors. Select the number of rows in there and press OK. Now going down the palette Docker, you will see your favorite one here. If you select a color, and click an empty color space, it's going to assign that color to the swatch. You can also use Shift A, the advanced color selector or any color selector, pick a color and click to create a new swatch. In DVAT's palette, you can see there are quite a few dark gray slots. He has added these swatches to fill up the palette and not have empty transparent swatches like we have at the bottom. You can also save your palette and attach it to your Krita document. For that, open the folder icon as well and change the palette to be a document palette. It will be saved inside your Krita file instead of being saved globally to your assets folder. I should add that the color palette is a grid now and that you can change also the amount of columns and rows for it anytime and the palette will update accordingly. Krita supports the GIMP palette format as well, so you can go to websites like LowSpec if you are a pixel artist, select one of the color palettes and download it as a GIMP file. To import the palette, go to Settings, Manage Resources, Import Palettes and navigate to your file. You use a GPL file for GIMP and press OK can then click in the bottom left of the palette docker and navigate down to the palette you just imported. The next improvement is 2 in 1. We are going to talk about gamut masking and the improvements to the artistic color selector. You can use that technique that's been explained quite in depth by James Gurney to create coherent color schemes for your paintings more easily than using the full color wheel. It's a little too tempting to select all kinds of colors that don't relate too well to one another. Often, working with one, two or three main tones is the way to go to make an impactful composition. 
To activate the gamut masking, you want to use the artistic color selector for one. It's not going to work with the advanced color selector for now in the beta. And you want to bring the gamut mask docker. For that, right click on any toolbar and click on gamut masks. You can also go to settings, dockers and find the dockers there. You'll want to have the artistic color selector, which is this one I'm using on the left. From there, make sure that the gamut mask icon is enabled in the top left corner of the artistic color selector and click a shape in the gamut masks docker. You can create your own, you can edit existing shapes or duplicate them. They are based on the vector tools with Krita, so these are all simple vector shapes. I'll select the split complementary gamut mask again. And from there, let's talk a bit about the artistic color selector. For one, you can use the rotation slider to rotate the mask around the wheel. Then, as before, you can click the pie icon to set the number of steps, luminosity steps, the hue steps, and the saturation steps that you have on your wheel. You also have now two infinity symbols to have a smooth gradient for the luminosity and for the hue, but not for the saturation steps. In case your color selector doesn't look like mine, click the options icon in the top right of the docker and you can change the color space to have different types of controls on the colors. I like HSI because it helps me to select very vibrant color, which I tend to use for game art. Besides that, I want to mention that you will find sliders similar to the ones in the Pi menu. These are the default settings for the Docker that you can apply by clicking on the Pi icon and clicking the Reset to Default button. From there, you can click anywhere on the color wheel, click on the left side to change the luminosity of the color and enjoy painting as usual. The flow parameter and the way it interacts with the opacity now works closer to that of other applications. What you can see on screen is the old behavior and the new behavior allows for a lot more control. Now you can revert a single preset to the old behavior. You want to open the brush editor with F5, go to the opacity tab and disable pen settings. Go to the flow parameter and make the curve bend like so a little bit and lower the strength down to 50%. With these settings, it's now a bit harder to make really soft strokes. The new behavior should offer you more control. You can go back to the old behavior globally by going to settings, configure creator, general tab, tools, sub tab, and look for the brush flow mode. You can go back to hard. The new one is called creamy. And as you can see, yes, it allows you to create creamy strokes. The next painting improvement is with the sharpness parameter. I'm drawing a stroke here to have a point of reference to see what sharpness does. I'll open the brush editor, toggle sharpness on, disable pen settings to show you what we had until now in Krita and crank up the strength value. Sharpness does that. It takes a brush and makes the stroke look really sharp. It makes the pixels in your brush stroke and in the brush tip either completely opaque or completely transparent. This is a great and a cheap way to get really dry strokes, bristly effects on your brushes and to mimic natural media. And one limitation to this tool until now is that we could not control the sharpness with the pen pressure. Now if we enable the pen settings, we can. I'll crank up the strength to 100% as this curve is going to multiply that value. So the value you pick on the slider sets a maximum for the curve. Then I'll quickly reset the curve and increase the lowest value to be roughly 50%, giving me slightly more control on the stroke. Note I get some artifacts here, so I have to reduce the maximum as well. And now we get nice results. So firstly, we can now control the sharpness with the pen pressure. And this allows me to let, when I'm not pressing too hard, some texture go through on the brush tip. 
and as I press harder to get much drier strokes that are going to be a lot more full. This depends entirely on the brush tip that you use, but you can see the difference between the two brush strokes with the same brush tip and the other settings are the same as well. Now there's another option that you have, another feature, the softened edge one. I'll try to paint a stroke that starts lightly. I'm going to increase the softened edge parameter to the maximum so we can see its effect. And now when I press lightly, I get a more natural, fairly blurry stroke. And as I press harder and harder and increase the strength of the sharpness effect, I get the same dry stroke as above. So you can use that parameter to add more control to the brush and to mimic brushing very softly on the canvas and get a more watery result. And as you press harder and harder, get a drier effect, which was not possible before. The multi-brush tool saw some improvements when it comes to visualization can use it to draw flowers and all. It's one I don't use enough, but it's really nice actually. And you have a new drawing mode for it. If you change the type option in the tool options docker, now have copy translate. It allows you to create and select the offset manually of the individual copies of your brush. Then when you deactivate the add mode, you can start, let me fill that and change the color. You can then draw with the offset that you designed by hand. The Python API saw some improvements. Now you have an API for animation and two plugins. One to import a video and put it in the background of your animation board. Another one to manage sprite sheets for game developers. Krita 4.2 comes with its lot of performance improvements. One has to do with drawing with procedural brushes. Those from the Auto tab, like Gaussian or Soft, they are now much, much, much faster to calculate. Another improvement affects all sorts of brushes and improves the use of your multi-core CPUs. So overall, you can get up to 50% increase in drawing speed. Drawing and painting on selections to update your selection mask is now a lot faster as well. Going to the global selection mask, I'm going to paint with a bit of white to add to the selection, a bit of black to subtract to my selection. Going back to the background layer, I'm going to fill it with some white tone. You can see that the selection updated almost instantly. If you're wondering how I get that selection layer at the top of my layer stack you have to go to select and make sure that show global selection mask is checked you can now move and transform your selections a lot more easily once you've created the selection place your cursor on the edge of it still with the selection tool selected and your cursor will change shape then click and drag to move the selection around the canvas on top of that now you can control click on a layers thumbnail to select its content. If I go to the global selection mask, control click on different layers, you will see the mask update instantly. Now all selections are vector by default, so you can click and drag, create a selection, and right click, select edit selection from the context menu to edit your selection as a vector shape. If I select the node selection tool, I can now round the corners of my rectangle. One big advantage of that is that with a tool like the Outline Selection tool, if you realize that your selection is a bit too small, you can edit it and scale it without losing any quality around the edge because it's a vector shape. On top of that, if you want, you can always convert your selection to a raster selection in the right-click context menu. On top of that, you can now combine selections, still with a selection tool active, control click on a layer to select its content, control shift click on a thumbnail to add it to the selection, control alt click to subtract a layer's content from the selection. You can see the performance improvements by the way here. And you can also use control shift and alt click to intersect two selections together. 
If I do that, create a new layer, let's select a purple color like so and fill, you will see I've selected the area of intersection of the two layers. You can still right click and go to select opaque on a given layer, but really control clicking on the thumbnail will be a lot more efficient. Lastly, once you have a selection to transform it, go to the selection layer, the selection mask and press Ctrl T. Use the regular tools you would use to transform it. If you go to the global selection mask, you can paint on it with the brush with black and white to add or subtract selection and you can Ctrl T to transform that selection or you could also use the T key to move the selection around with the transform tool. This is not new, but this is good to know. There have been over 1,500 bug fixes and a wide range of UX improvements, like the news that are now visible on the welcome screen. An improved overview docker with much better navigation. You can now easily rotate your document with the slider, mirror it and click and drag with better preview of what it's going to show. Before, the move tool that you use to move layers around didn't have its own undo history. Now you can undo every step individually. That is, at least for now, until you change the tool. I've done three move steps on the yellow square. If I change to a selection tool and undo, it will undo all three move steps at once. The next improvement have to do with the layers docker. Now it's a lot easier to see what you are hovering when the layer is colored. And by clicking on the option icon in the top right, you can now change the thumbnail size. Have them really big if you make videos or if your eyesight is really good, you can have lots of layers visible at once. Krita creates backups of the files you work on. It adds a tilde at the end of the document name by default so that they act as hidden files on Linux at least. Now you can configure that in settings, configure Krita, general category, file handling tab, and you can deactivate the backups, change the number of files that you get, change the suffix and select the save folder. The manual also saw important improvements with this new release. It's now based on Sphinx, the same system that powers the Godot docs and a lot of free and open source software's manuals. It allows you to write the docs and the developers as well to work offline and to push the changes in larger batches instead of working with the online wiki. You also find new pages for the new features like the gamut mask and again improvements all around the documentation. I highly recommend downloading the manual. You can download it on the welcome page by clicking the here link that you can see on my screen. This allows you to read the manual in an ebook reader where you can easily navigate it and quickly search anything much faster than you could if you were working online. I like this approach because it allows me to read the manual page by page and to check all of the concepts that are taught inside of it linearly, but also to bookmark pages that I would like to go back to. Now go ahead and go play with this new version. The art you can see in the background made by Tyson Tan is drawn in Krita. Everything I do on the channel is also made in Krita. I use it, I highly recommend it. And if you want to learn more about the program, we have free tutorials on the channel. You will find a link in the video description. For now, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.